Hi, this is Misha, and in this video we're looking at a new product from Atlantic Firearms Manufacturing. This was released just before Christmas, and is another in their series based around the WBP parts. Now we did a three-part review, rather about a month-long review, of their WBP CG1 Polska, which is essentially the same as their classic, but on a Childers receiver and with a uh, fancier pants pistol grip. And today, this new version is what they're calling the WBP Burial Style Rifle. Some people have taken issue with them using Burial Style and suggested they use other names, Enhanced, Enhanced Tactical, Tactical, whatever. I don't take issue with them using Burial, and I'll kind of explain why through this video. And while we have this out, and since we're talking burial, I had to bring out my archer because we need it for comparison. And also because I will take any, any opportunity <laughs> to bring my archer out because I truly, truly adore it. It's a fantastic rifle. Finally, the internet and the gun world at large has also kind of taken note of this, but unfortunately they have not been imported for several years now so sad but there it is alrighty so this new gun how does it differ and how is it similar from their previous WBPs well first it's similar in that we still have a 16 and a quarter inch barrel manufactured at the FB Radom factory formerly Circle 11 this is cold hammer forged and chrome lined It's pinned into a true forged trunnion. This is not investment cast. This is a trunnion made by WBP. The other parts on here are also made by WBP. The bolt group, for example, dust cover, gas block, front sight, rear sight, controls, so on and so forth. We are built on a Childers receiver, just like the CG1. This is neat for a couple of reasons. First off, we do have Polish selector markings on the side, along with three notches, although the middle notch is just another semi-auto and does not do full. Another reason the Childers is a nice choice for any of these builds is these are originally from Poland. The receiver shells come over pre-bent they even already have the magwell and the trigger hole cut out. And they even have the XY stamps already pressed in all over in Poland. They come over in the white, untreated. They aren't heat treated. The, heel, the steel isn't uh, any treated. It's just raw steel. Childers will weld in the rails. They use military style larger spot welds, which is nice. It's a little stronger perhaps and more it's just the look of it then of course they'll heat treat they'll finish them heat treat them do all that so we have a receiver that's technically u.s made but the original steel at least came from poland but what makes this different well obviously it looks quite different we have a specially made muzzle brake for the burial style We have, let me flip it over here again, guys. 
an extended shelf safety. We have an extended and enlarged mag release. This ships with one 30 round WBP translucent polymer mag, which is a nice touch if you ask me. We have a new style of pistol grip. This one is made by CAA, more of an ergonomic grip. And of course, most importantly, we have the Breal scope rail system. Now this is the true system. This isn't um, one of the, like the dust cover mounted knockoffs. Get over here. This fits tight, which you really want. Be kind of scared if this just came off easily. There we go. Once you start to move it, it gets a little easier. Then it just lifts up, hinges, like that. And then you can pull it off if you need to. It's kind of forked in. And this is really at the heart of not only this rifle, the WBP rifle, but the Burial in general. This was one of the first things they started working on at the Radium factory while designing the Burial. In the front, we have a slot cut into the rear sight base, one on each side. That is to let this pronged end go in. You see there's two little knobs. This lets it hinge or be pulled off. This is very custom, precise work. And it also attaches using the rear trunnion by this cylinder, this knob here, which has a cutout in the back. See? And that's, as you saw, to let that lever lock on. This has a middle, uh, this is open, then it has kind of a middle position and then a full position. And it locks down very similar to how an AK side scope rail locks down. We'll leave this off. It does come with this rail system. I have made some modifications to this gun to suit my tastes. For example, this comes with polymer handguards. They are WBP mil-spec handguards. I replaced those with WBP mil-spec style quad rail handguard set. What's neat about this upper handguard, it's actually integral with the gas tube, so you don't have to actually twist your old gas tube off. It means you can swap between it and a standard upper very easily. It also means this is very sturdy. I actually had to use a couple of light taps with the rubber mallet to fully seat it and fully lock it in so it's very sturdy up here. The lower hand guard is a typical three rail setup. They're reasonably long. We have a WBP foregrip very similar to a Magpul but instead of made of polymer it's made of uh, aluminum alloy. Which is interesting. I'm not sure if it's better or worse, but it's interesting. This lower handguard fits very tight, but it has just a smidge in a play if you really torque on the grip. But it's very minor. It, it has a spring inside that presses up against the barrel to keep tension on, and of course it fits into the uh, collar up here. Also, I replace the AK-74 style stock with this WBP stock, which is very similar. They're both polymer. This one has a metal butt plate, bottom mounted sling swivel. It's pretty hollow, it's pretty uh, solid. It's got a little hollow core like most polymer, but it's it feels very solid with very little flex and it went on very, very well without difficulty, as did this uh, handguard set. These both fit into the gun without difficulty. Also, this originally came with a Tapco trigger group. I'm not a big fan of the Tapcos. I don't like the shape. I don't really like the break. So I put one of the newer Arsenal, or I should say FIME, trigger groups in. Which are basically a U.S. copy of the Molot semi-group. 
They're not the lightest in the world, but what I like about them, they have a very predictable brake. And I like the shape of the trigger itself. But as I said, it did come with this burial style magazine. Everything else is as you see it. So yeah, first impressions, and what do I think about it? Well, we have my Archer here. Let's start with this, because it's already off. This is the rail it comes with. It is very close to the one. On my Archer. But the one that the Archer came with is the Gen 4. It sits a little taller. The mounts are basically identical, as you see. It's just the rail sits a smidgen lower, which I believe most American shooters will uh, actually appreciate. People don't like how high the sight sets on the burial style. So this sits it a little lower. It is a Polish mount. That's nice. Let's talk about the pistol grip. This is the current Polish military ambidextrous ergonomic grip. You can see it here, it's solid polymer. It's hollow on the bottom. Uses a short screw. Relatively big grip, honestly. So guys with big paws will like that. Originally I was gonna replace the one before I got this in, but look at this command arms grip that they went with. It looks extremely similar. And really, in a lot of ways, I think is better. For one, it has rubber in the back and in the front. Just small rubber, not, not too gushy, but just enough to keep it a little comfortable. And it has a small storage compartment, which is really pretty useful. I keep the, the gear for the site in here, the wrenches and uh, cleaning cloth. So it's a good place to put your um, extra little things like that. So I'm very appreciative of that. So I, I, I actually am probably going to keep this grip on even though I was going to replace it. <laughs> the safeties are so similar, I actually wondered if the one on the WBP wasn't made at Radom. Looking here and here, we have the two small typical AKM, and then we have the longer shelf in the back you see the only real difference I can tell is the one on the archer is a little further back this one's a little further forward and this one's more rounded on the edge and this one's more straight so this really seems like a better design it's a little further forward where it's more useful and it's rounded a bit and they could not just ever take one straight off a burial and put it on an AKM style gun because of how the safeties work so there is that but this is very similar likewise the mag catch as you see is this extended circular pattern here or semi-circular we see the same thing on the archer here which is a standard modern the real part. They introduced this in the early 21st century after feedback from soldiers. These parts are so similar, I asked, even though I think they're probably both built by WBP, I did confirm for sure that these are Polish parts. These are not US made copies. So these are Polish extended controls. While we're talking here in this area, looking at the magazines, it's pretty dang clear that the mags, the current WBP 76239 mags, are the same as the 556 burial mags, just larger for the larger cartridge, of course, and more of an, an angle to feed it. So the mag is almost identical. Now the handguards, on my own Archer, I've just kind of opted to go with the very traditional handguard. I like it, it's comfortable, cool looking, 
but there's so many handguard setups for this. There are several that do look like this, actually. Metal quad rail. So quite close. Moving on. The muzzle device. The original military burial has a muzzle brake, like just like this. This is a Polish brake. And these are pinned on to maintain best accuracy. Obviously that wouldn't work well for a gun with threads, so what Atlantic did, they manufactured their own brake that's a copy. And they did a very good job, I believe. It has the two ports on each side at the bottom, and it has the ports at the top, and they're even off-center just a bit, like on the military. It has the ring for the grenade ring here, the slot, I should say. And it even has the relief here for a bayonet to fit through. But it won't take one because it doesn't have the same style of lug. The, um, the Archer has bayonet lugs, but they're not machined out. On the military gun, this would be the lug here, and the bayonet would lock down here, fitting here and here. On this, we do have a bayonet lug, but because of this break, the, the addition, distance is too much, so it would uh, not quite work. If you took this break off and put something else on, you could put a bayonet on, though. The Archer did not have a cleaning rod under its barrel because of the different handguard options and things. So they would store it in their cleaning kit. The WBP obviously has a standard AKM hang, uh, cleaning rod. So let's get into some differences. Starting at the rear, the Archer has the current military generation adjustable four position stock. This replaced the original side folder a long time ago, over 10 years ago. The WBP has a fixed stock. They do also make a few different versions, including an underfolding stock, side folding, different things. The actual rear trunnion sections are the same because they're both AKM, AK-74 style. They, they are a little different because they have this widened out area, this square area here for the mount, and they both have it. So you do have to modify stocks to fit but it's very easy to do with the Dremel or even a, a file if you were very patient. So the stocks are a little different. We already talked about the pistol grips. I think they did a good job. These ergo grips are still difficult to get in the USA. You can find them, but yeah. This is based on a 74 style receiver taken from the Tantal. So it has it back over the selector on the side the fire mode which will select from single three round burst or full auto this is why they had to go to all the trouble developing the top mount in the first place because they couldn't put a side rail on this oops slings ah, this does not have that. It's an AKM pattern receiver and it has the more traditional scope mount. These are made by Atlantic Firearms. Likewise, our other big difference is in the barrel assembly. The Archer, the Burial in 5.56 has an 18 inch very thin profile barrel. This is based on the AK-74 and its 5.45 cartridge, so it's even thinner than an AKM. This is why we have this space here, because of the longer barrel. We move back, we have got a front sight, obviously. We have a 90 degree gas block with this lug for the bipod. Then we have this specialized handguard it's a single piece retainer. It's a quick detaching style with this throw lever. Pretty neat design. The only problem is it means most upper hand guards, really all of them won't work with it, but a lot of lower as well. And it has a second sling swivel on the right side to make it more ambidextrous. Whereas the WBP has your standard AKM profile barrel.
16 inches. Front sights are actually very similar on the two. But then we have a 45 degree gas block. We have a slightly thicker profile barrel. And we have the very traditional handguard style. Of course, because the gas tube and this is a single piece, there's no retainer here. We just have the small lower retainer. And we don't have the ambidextrous sling swivel. And we have just the fixed buttstock, of course. So those are the differences and similarities. Otherwise, they're very similar. The dust cover is the same rib pattern, the bolt, the caulking handle. All this looks the same. Obviously, this is scaled down for 5.56, but all the rest is very, very similar rivet styles. It's also worth noting that FB Radom does make a 7.62.39 version of the Burial. It has a 16 inch barrel, so a little shorter, but it still retains the 90 degree gas block. And it has seen military adoption in contracts, not in Poland, but for export. So there is a military version of the Burial in that caliber. So that gets into the differences and similarities. So what do I think about it? First impressions are very positive. These retail for $1,129, which seems significant, and it's not cheap. That does get you the scope mount, though. And any quality AK scope mount is going to set you back at least $75, more than $100 usually. And we get the neat burial mounting system. On the other hand, they retained the side scope rail, which seems it at best redundant. And they ship with just a, a polymer stock and polymer handguards. So they could have done better. The problem here is if they had included the railed handguards and they had included the collapsing stock, which, by the way, they do have as an option to add on to upgrade your gun at Atlantic. This would have further increased price. With the handguards in the stock, it would have at least moved the price up $250. And they more correctly, I think, thought $1,130, a little over $1,100 is already significant money. People, if they want these other parts, can add them themselves. If they attach them from the factory, you're looking at a gun well over $1,300, basically $1,400. There would be some takers, but not many, and even a lot of those would probably want a different stock or handguard anyway. So I understand the decision to go with, um, I don't want to say the cheapest furniture possible. I mean, the handguards especially are very good. The buttstock is a K-Var buttstock, so they went with good quality parts that were, you know, available, but they did save some money there, and I think it's to the customer's uh, benefit, so that they can, you know, add whatever they want. As to the scope mount, I think it's just one of those things. Their reason for keeping it on is to give flexibility. Say if someone has a Cobra sight, they could pull off the real style mount and use the side mount. Also, they were already making this receiver pattern for the CG-1. So it's probably logistically better just to keep a, the same receiver set up for both guns and future guns that are coming in 2018 as well. So I understand it was kind of a concession. It's something that needed to be done. And it really is an added feature. It doesn't hurt anything being there. Cosmetically, it's a little odd, I agree but it does give some flexibility. So for people more like me that are purists, it's probably not welcome. For your average shooter, it's it, at the very least not noticeable and at the very most an added bonus because you have two different ways to mount an optic. As to the barrel setup, this is again just how it is. These are built from WBP parts. This is basically a semi-automatic version assembled in the USA from original parts of what WBP calls their enhanced jack or their jack enhanced rifle. They have it has the extended controls and it has this barrel profile. This is the barrel we can get. This is the FB AKM profile barrel. 
WBP does not make a 90 degree gas block. They make this 45 degree. So if Atlantic was to go to a 90 degree gas block, they would have had to source a block from somewhere else. And it would have not been a functional upgrade. It wouldn't have changed accuracy, reliability. It would be purely cosmetic. Even then, we would still have a slightly thicker barrel compared to this gun here. And there isn't approval from the ATF to import the AK-74 profile style barrels from Poland or anywhere else. We're very lucky just to get these AKM FB barrels. So this is what they had to work with. These are the styles of parts that were sent over by WBP because it's what they have. And again, it is a semi-automatic version of their own jack rifle. Interestingly enough, the front sight itself is cut almost identical. It even has kind of the front curve here. Oops. Front curve here. Where the cleaning rod's retained. And that's very similar to what's on the, uh, on the Archer. They did go to the treble to replicate the muzzle brake and did a fantastic job. And this will fit any AKM rifle or any rifle with 14 by one threads, 30 caliber or smaller. So they did go to that treble. So my first impression is simply this. It's even though it's not a burial, there would not have been much more they could have done to make it more burial like at least not without vastly inflating the cost so i can't think of much i would have done different except maybe leave off the side scope mount and while i think it would be neat to see the ship with the railed hand guards and either collapsing or maybe a different folding stock i understand why that's economically probably not a good idea. They need to sh keep the cost as reasonable as possible and let the end user configure how they want. So yeah, first impressions are quite positive. And I do like that pretty much all the parts are Polish. Polish parts kit, Polish barrel, and a receiver with Polish origins. So, neat. And since we can't get anything from FB Radom right now, much less Archers and 7.62.39, Hey, the most recent Archer on Gunbroker sold for like 4600 so 1100 doesn't seem so bad, and you are getting a gun that um, has the same reliability. We haven't really done much accuracy testing yet, but we will, I'm sure. We'll do an update video or two on this. For what it is, I think it's a really interesting and neat gun for 2018. The rivets are all done very well. And if you want to see just how any of these WBP guns from Atlantic shoot and run, please check out our first review series on them. That will tell you about their reliability and durability and what we thought after a few thousand rounds. We'd love to hear your own, uh, own comments on this. And if you have any suggestions or maybe how this could be done better, I mean, those are always welcome. Atlantic, I'm sure we'll read them. Honestly, I get the impression that they want to deliver the best gun they can while still, of course, making a profit. So any constructive criticisms, anything that they can do within reason, I'm sure they would at least entertain the notion, which is a lot more than you'll get from some companies like, oh, I don't know, Century, or even to some extent Arsenal who's never really even listened and really can't because of how they're set up. I am not trying to really promote this. I'm giving my honest opinion. I really love my Archer. And I was really hoping F, excuse me, Radom USA would make a go of it. I was really planning to buy the mini Archer pistol and uh, hopefully an Archer in 7.62.39. That didn't happen, and last year in May, we found out for sure that Radom USA was gone. They, they turned in their business license. They no longer exist. So after that disappointment last year, seeing this pop up at Atlantic in December was at least something. At least we're getting something Polish in that modern style. So that's kind of my take on it. And feel free to share your own comments, and if you don't agree, that's okay. I'd, I'd honestly like to hear 
that too and what you think. Anywho, if you like the video, we'd appreciate it if you click like. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, and could do so. Also, if this interests you and you'd like to help support us, please check out our Patreon page. And also, please tune in again soon for another hopefully interesting video. This is Misha. And we'll catch you next time.